Today on Judge Faith, room rental gone wrong. She said that she does not feel safe with me in the home. I realized like three weeks around the 21st that this is just not working. The rules were laid down. When you're eating, you can use the dining room. When you're going and having to use the kitchen, you can use the kitchen. Of well, course. is he allowed to use the bathroom or do you have time restrictions on that as well? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Blair Zajac Jr. is suing his former landlady for his security deposit and emotional damage. Defendant Patricia Aglano says she didn't feel safe because her tenant tried to hack into her computer. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Zajac versus Anglano. Thank you, Barbara. Blair Zajac? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Patricia Anglano? Yes. For $4,940 for an unpaid security deposit and emotional damage? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. And you are countersuing, ma'am, for $5,000? Yes. For loss of rent, apartment cleaning fees, and emotional damage? So I assume the two of you were living together at some point? Awesome. As roommates? Yes. Okay. And when was that, sir? August, the month of August. And what kind of home do you live in? I um, rent a townhouse in Santa Monica. It's a four-bedroom townhouse. I'm subleasing two bedrooms, and he subleased one of them. How did you hear about the bedroom that she had up for I rent? I found the listing on Craigslist, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. Did the two of you sign a written agreement? Yes, we did. May I see that, please? Yes, Your Honor. So you were renting one room in this house for how much? $1,400 a month, Your Honor. Okay, that seems to be a lot for one room. Is this a particular high rent area? It's a nice area. It is a very nice area, and actually it's a very reasonable um, rent, in my opinion. Um, for that, fact, for this area? Yes, because, you know, I, he had access to certain parts of the home fully furnished. You know, so we're not talking about just renting a room, right? We're talking about, you know, having access to someone else's furniture. In, in part of the house. Which and also... I did not, Your Honor, get actually access to all the time. Well, hold on a second. Uh, and then you paid a $2,800 security deposit yes, I to did. move in. Yes. Okay. So you move in, and what's the agreement? You have a room, but you also have access to a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, yes, I assume? Yes, a TV, supposedly. Okay. That is not yeah. true. I said it's a common living space. The gentleman obviously, you know, can have access to certain, you know, common living areas, like the kitchen, like the dining room. Um, and the living room. And then I said, of course, you know, when I'm home, I'm the, I'm the landlord, you know, I mean, I'm watching TV, my boyfriend's over, common sense, you know, obviously I'm using my space. Right, I didn't you... say that, you know, he could go and sit next to me, which is exactly what happened. He was sitting in my living room and his wife passed away. And when I said to him, you're sitting awfully close, meaning like I was sitting on my sofa, my little dog was sitting next to me and he was sitting literally right next to me. I said, if you sit in my living room with me, I don't have a problem with it as long as you give me some space and some privacy. You know what he said to me? He said to me, you know what? That's okay. I'm used to it. I used to do that with my wife all the time. No, and that's when that's I felt so he was not coming true. on to me. No, and that is so inappropriate. That's not true at all. It I is would, so inappropriate. I would, I mean, that's, that's a leap. You're just making a leap, ma'am. All he said was, who I all he said was he was comfortable all, sitting in the living room with you. you, and you're thinking the man you're, is coming on to you. I'm just saying, that seems like a, a leap to me. Well, yeah, there was no... It wasn't really a leap. When you know how desperate this guy is... Your Honor, I would never hit on you. Listen, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're not that well, you know what? He's not cute. I actually didn't want to stop, stop lease talking. Him. Do you have this spelled out in the lease that people cannot use the living room area when you and your boyfriend are in the living room? I told him that when I'm not home, and I interviewed him, I said, when I'm not home, you're welcome to use the living room space. But, I but that's not in the lease. It is not in the lease, but I made it very clear when I interviewed him, and I also told him that the TV is off limits. 
Okay, right? so you don't put that in the lease, but you're telling me that when someone moves in... This is not... Okay, this is very simple. It is not a common, like, meaning like a roommate, equal roommate situation. I made it very clear. It's a sublease agreement. You're subleasing a room. When you're eating, you can use the dining room. When you're going and having to use the kitchen, you can use the kitchen. When I'm not home, you can go and sit in the living room. And in fact, I actually even Your wrote him an email saying, saying that, of well, course... Well, is he allowed to use the bathroom, or do you have okay. time restrictions on that as well? shared with the other guy. Mr. Zajac. Yes. Tell me what happened after you moved in. I mean, I have a idea mm -hmm. of what happened after you moved in. <laughs> right. But tell me, how long did you live there? I lived there maybe for a total of three and a half, almost four weeks. So tell me what happened during that three and a half, four week period. Well, there was a lot of little rules. I only found out about the TV later. She actually offered, when I moved in, to put a cable in my room. And so I thought, why do I need that? Because you have a nice TV. I didn't say this, you know, but it was like, obviously... See, you didn't say it. No, Don't interrupt you didn't, again. You didn't say anything. Don't interrupt again. So, and then uh, we got into little arguments about stupid little stuff. Like okay, the, so she told you about the TV and yes. she didn't want you watching the right. TV when she was home in the living room yes. area. Right. Okay, what's next? Two weeks later, she finally gave me access to the TV. And actually, I was trying to make the relationship work. So I... Relationship? Well, not the relationship. The landlord-roommate relationship. Right. We just stop. Okay, it's not a roommate. So, <laughs> so. I mean, he, he's confusing so. roommate and relationship. So she was, the defendant was out of work. I actually gave her resume to my employer to get a job. And then I realized, like, three weeks, around the 21st, that this is just not working. So I gave five weeks notice. Coming up on Judge Faith, a cleaning calamity. One of the reasons why the cleaning lady got freaked out is because she showed me one of the boxes and there were ashes coming outside the boxes and there was that a burn so in there. And true. I'm like freaking out, like, whose ashes are these? I knew he has a late wife. I was freaked out. Plaintiff Blair Zajac Jr. says his former landlady was a nightmare and is suing for his security deposit. Defendant Patricia Anglano says he didn't respect boundaries and was impossible to live with. Why is this not working? I mean, I've well, you've TV, submitted emails. Right. Tell me other things that happened. Well, she gave me access to the living room, and then she finally said, you know, when my boyfriend comes over, you need to leave the living room. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I had access to it all the time. Tell me about the time she sent you an email about the toilet. Right, so she believes that the toilet, when you have the lid up, will spread germs around the house. They'll also, she has a pet, of course, which I understand you don't want the pet drinking from the toilet. So there's times when I would just forget to put the both toilet seats down. I was married, so you normally leave, you know, just one toilet seat okay. down for your spouse. But and so, so, and so she emailed you about the toilet seat? Yeah, she wanted both of them down. Okay. Yes. Both of them. You had and access to one wanted, toilet. And she also wanted the room cleaned, and she had her maid go in my room, which I thought was an invasion of my personal privacy. Did she tell you in advance that someone was coming in your room to clean? It's in no. the lease. No. That okay. doesn't make any sense. You can't no, just the lease not clean says the to room. keep the place clean. It didn't say there would be any place, anybody else coming into. So the... how did you find out that someone had been in your room? The defendant emailed me saying the cleaning person could not clean my room because it was too messy. Okay, and how did you know that his room was messy? Uh, my cleaning lady, who has been with me for a number of years in different homes, actually called me. She was cr screaming, and she she told me what I knew to be like true once I got home. There were 25 boxes, I counted them, That's... stacked up wall to wall, it... and then there is an air... In his room? In his no, room. And bed... I, let me tell you something about the condition that he told me he would move. There's he my... said he will have clothes and an air bed mattress with him. He told me he has a storage space because he gave up his home after his wife passed away. I told him, well, you have a storage space as long as you just bring your clothes. But, Your Honor, and that, since that this is only for a few months and your air bed, then that's fine. It's a 10 by 11 room. When I actually go How and like, go into this room after my cleaning lady complained about the situation, I went into this room the first time. This was 22, 21 or 22 days after he moved in. I was shocked. There were boxes stacked all the way to the ceiling. Now, so obviously he suddenly didn't want to use the storage there might have been anymore. Boxes and, on and on top of that, there was next to his bed, there was a tiny little area, probably the size of this little area, that was filled with dust and dirt. And do you know what bothered me about that? And you can probably relate to it as a woman. He was he was so dirty in his room. Some of the dirt tracked into the hallway in the kitchen. And I got really upset. I was like, what's going on? And I didn't go into his room until my cleaning lady told me on 22 days and his email. And I have an email from what? him. Tell me about the boxes. What was the issue with the boxes? Well, she claimed it was a fire hazard and she just wanted the place generally clean. 
And what, tell me about your room. Did you have 25 boxes? No, Your Honor, I might have had 10. Okay, so what, what was the issue with him having boxes in his room? He's well, living there, he just all, moved was, in, yeah, he was, has some stuff in boxes. Yeah, so well, what? it's a fire hazard. I have someone in my family who actually I mean, he's paying you $1,400 for a room. Can yeah, the man not have a few but boxes? But it's, it's not a storage space. It is not a storage space. He told me it has a storage space. I told him based on that, he can go and come in with clothes on an airbed, not with his entire storage space. And then he wrote me back stop, saying that... Stop talking. I need you to... I need you to turn it down. <laughs> I should mention you also the story about the ashes, his wife's ashes. Uh, Let me tell you something. The, one of the reasons why the cleaning lady got freaked out is because, and she doesn't speak English that well, but I love her, and you know, she was very upset, and she's a very sweet person. She actually waited until I got home because she wanted to show me something really special. She showed me one of the boxes, and there were ashes coming outside the boxes, and there was that an urn so in there, and true. I'm like freaking out, like, whose ashes are these? I knew he has a late wife. I was freaked out. I There's actually no said, I can't, I can't believe what's going on here. And then he, in his email, Wait, Response why? And by why do you way, care? My wife... Hold on a second. So he has an urn with ashes, and it... I'm sorry. Sir, he didn't tell me he would do that. Why? That's urn. really creepy. Why is that any of your business? Because why is that any of your business? Why is that any of your business? Why is that your business? They were spread all over the floor. I don't care. They were spread all over the floor. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't care if he has his wife's ashes I wouldn't care in either. a vial around his neck. It's not your business. He mentioned it in the email. It's in his room, he in a box in, in his room. That's not your business. It's, it's you guys are obviously poking. Or, you know what? I wasn't poking at all. I wasn't intended to go to He actually, I, I want to tell you that in his email reply, he actually said that nobody should clean his room. He can't live in a home without cleaning a room. Sir, um, do you have anything else you want to say? What were the <laughs> circumstances? <laughs> What were the circumstances of you moving out? So, two, I gave the five weeks notice. That he did not. No, there's an email proof that I can document. Okay. Yes, you accepted the September 30th move out date. What was the last straw for you? So, two days later, she accused me of attempting to hack her computer. Yes. And then she also, <laughs> and then she said that she does not feel safe with me in the home. Tell me about that, the hacking of the um, computer. Well, I was at a play at Long Beach when I received the email from her saying somebody had tried to hack her computer, and I said, I'm sorry, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day she sent me a longer email accusing me of being the one who had hacked her computer, or attempted to hack her computer. And what was your response to that? Uh, well, it's a complete and utter lie. I'm a man of integrity, and that would be a really good way to get fired from my job. So What do you do for a living? I'm a I'm a I work in I'm a software engineer at a high tech company. Okay. Why do you think he tried to hack your computer? Actually I can tell you exactly what happened. I have a Wi Fi network at home that I share with my two subleases, right? So this really nice guy who is still renting there is a neurosurgery doctor, and he had the same experience that I had, so we're sharing the same experience. He uh, also felt like his space was violated. He and I came home one evening, not just my computer, his computer too. We both got the same message on our respective screens. Now, these are two different people on two different laptops getting the same message. And uh, then I also work in high tech, I'm a producer. I went, well, I, went the next day. I, I went the next day to my work, talked to my IT department, showed them a picture of the message, and I said, what exactly is going on here? And you know what I was told? Call your cable company right away. There is somebody who got into your Wi-Fi network, and there was nobody else. I knew there was nobody else who had the password to that Wi-Fi network other than him and my other sub -leasy. My other sub I've what never... What was the message? What was the message The message that you was were saying that somebody um, was trying... Um, the attempt was made by another device to, uh, to uh, access my network. Next on Judge Faith, there's more fuel to this fire. He actually said that that was the reason that why my wife died. Oh! I would never say, his ex-girlfriend said that to him. What? My, why would she be with me? Plaintiff Blair Zajac Jr. is suing his former landlady for his security deposit and emotional damage. Defendant Patricia Aguano says she didn't feel safe because her tenant tried to hack into her computer. What proof do you have that it was Mr. Zajac that tried to hack into your computer, I if that even happened? I have another proof, and I'll tell you exactly what happened. I came home even before I looked at my computer screen, and I overheard him having a conversation in his room. And he had a conversation about an IP address, 
and my cable company. No, now, he does not have, not he has no interest in getting cable for himself. And why is he, you know what, an IP address, an IP address is a network. And I actually confronted him about that. I said, oh, not only so hold on a, a second. She says she overheard yeah. you having a conversation very scary. about an IP address and a well, cable network. What no. was going on? Okay, so it was not, I didn't mention, I, I was having a conversation with my friend who does my taxes for the 2013. And I owned a home in, in Hemet, and I was looking at using the Verizon Files as a tax write-off. What a strange okay. coincidence! Okay, and so, um, so to answer, what is your... so after that, I was like, I'm out of here. You know, I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else she could accuse me of. Um, and then the defendant got really. When I would come home, she got in my face and would follow me to the bathroom and curse me out. And that then, is completely wrong. And I then was incredibly she actually, nice to him. Stop. And then she, get, this is why the emotional damages, she actually said that that was the reason that why my wife died from oh. pain. So. I would never say said that to him. She was right there. Did you, no, did you say that? No, this is a private conversation with you. No, I'm just asking you a question. I don't know him well enough. I don't okay. care, to be honest So he's lying about that? No, you he said, lied about that. You because said that's the kind of person he is. If you look at my emails... No, I'm just asking you a question. If you yeah. said it, you said no, you didn't say it. His okay. ex-girlfriend said that, clearly. What? My, why would she be All right. But anyway, I was you tell said you, I so. Was you moved out. Yes. You paid a twenty-eight hundred dollars security seven days deposit notice at that point. At that point, but you no, had already it wasn't seven days notice. In the there was email, no notice. I have an email notice. showing the reasons why I moved out because of the breach of contract with the common area, and you removing uh, the Wi-Fi access, which is stated as something you should grant in the contract. So, he gave you notice at the end of August that he wanted to move out by September thirtieth. Exactly. Do you remember receiving that email? Yes, okay. I do have that email. I also went through a few other emails. Just a few things I, I noticed. You emailed him on August 22nd, close the toilet seat. There are a few things you need to think about, and I'm starting to think you are doing this on purpose. Please cooperate, all caps. Don't, do not reply or talk back. He, 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 was, he was talking back at me. He was very belligerent. This is, this is not the time for you to interrupt Sorry. me. I'm just going through some things Sorry. I've observed and analyzed from the emails. Another email you sent to him, clean up and act like a grown up. Leaving your room in a mess is a violation of home rules. This is August 22nd. What did you move in? The first. Okay. There can be no boxes on the floor. This is what you're telling him about his room, that he's paying $1,400 a month it's to rent. It's using it as a storage there space, Honor. I need you to stop interrupting me. You're really starting to annoy me. paying $1,400 for this room to rent from you, and you write, there can be no boxes on the floor, and what does not fit into the closet can be put on a desk or a shelf. And now, Judge Faith rules. I see a number of these emails, just three weeks of him living <laughs> in, 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 in this room. And he clearly did not and pay for And what I'm telling September. you, ma'am, is the people on Rikers Island have fewer rules to live by than this man has. You know what's really funny about that? He has, no, he has no sense of privacy. You're talking about a man who, like, violated what my face. What is your case? claim about okay, emotional so damage and lost rent? Yes, because he did not give me 30-day notice. He did not pay for September. Clearly, he did not pay for September, so he lied to you, Honor. And then secondly, I he has not, not given me seven days notice. Honor. He had also not proved that because he didn't. He was, a creep, he was a creepy man who, who I think has Asperger's syndrome, meaning he has no sense of boundaries and no sense of like social skills. And the only reason... So now you're a doctor, well, you you, know, you're a producer, I, I, but now I, I, you're a doctor I actually too. am. That well, is here's my what career. I think. Here, here's what I think. I think you're crazy. That's what I think. <laughs> I think you're crazy. so happy living there with me. That doesn't make any sense, and you know that, and I know that. your counterclaim is dismissed, and I'm ordering you to return his full security deposit, $2,800. In fact, I would want you to pay me to live with you in that house. You should not you have money. You know what? Your you counterclaim is you dismissed. Know. Judge you before the plaintiff, $2,800. That is not cool, because you know what? You can't call people that way. That step is so unreal. Step out. She's like, she's a... If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. 
To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.